Hello and welcome to this webinar. We're going to wait a couple seconds here. Hey, Kim. Hi. How's it going? I, can, I, even, I have no idea what I look like. For I had to go on my phone because oh. my my internet is not working really well. <laughs> so. Oh no. Um, I just I have everyone else here who has logged in. I just want to make sure. Can somebody just comment in the chat and make sure you can hear Kim and I and you can see our video? I want to make sure before I start screen sharing and actually get started with this. So if somebody can see at the bottom, click your chat. Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, thank you. I think that's a song. <laughs> or no, that's Help Me, Rhonda. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. We're already recording here. And we're going to get started. And this is really going to be like a conversation. Um, between Kim and I, as we're sharing, I'm going to be talking about the different lessons that I learned from Roger while we were um, in Chicago. And, you know, just different things that he learned about being an entrepreneur. Um, and so, hold on one second here. I can't see because this is in the way. All right. So different lessons that he's learned over the years being an entrepreneur himself. And it actually started when he was four years old. Um, he and his brother started a shoe sign business. And so our first lesson that he shared, and you know, you guys, I'm just super excited to talk about this because I think that, you know, we are all searching for the American dream, but the American dream has really shifted here in the U S and, um, you know, it's not what it once was. Um, people can start businesses in different ways than we could at one time. Um, and that's why I'm so excited about this because it's available for anybody. And we're going to really get into that tonight. Um, but first, we're going to cover these different lessons that Roger learned along the way um, that I think are really going to apply to us because we all have these different lessons in our lives. And this is just, you know, it really is something that we can all have. And we're going to go over that tonight and how that's possible. So lesson number one is constraints. Okay. So typically we trade time for money, right? We go to a job, we trade our time, we get paid money. Um, usually you don't get paid unless you're either at your job or you're doing work or, you know, whatever capacity it is. It doesn't matter if you're sal salary or hourly, you still trade your time for money. Um, and Roger learned this early on at four years old with his shoe shine business was that as they grew that business, that little business, they realized really quick that they only had so much time and that they couldn't multiply themselves to work more time to get, you know, more business, if that makes sense, you know, so they only had so much. And so they have these constraints and we have these constraints too. We all only have 24 hours in a day. So if you look at a lot of people nowadays, they have two jobs, three jobs, some even have four jobs, but there's only so much of us <laughs> that we can apply to different jobs. And there's only so much time that we can be working in a day. So that's lesson number one is that we all have these constraints in our lives. Um, lesson number two is that, you know, as Roger was uh, getting older and he was going to college, he began to um, look for different ways to earn money. So different jobs, different, different things like that. And so a lot of what he did was um, he would do like project projects for different companies um, where he would go and he would collect data for them, do research. And then once this project was over, then he would get paid and he got paid pretty well. But when he looked at that, you know, it was, it was a one-time thing. There was no way for him to continue getting paid over time for that same project. And so this brings about the whole concept of residual income. And he started thinking about this early, um, just some way to create a lifetime pay potential that you actually get paid over time again and again and again for doing work one time. Um, and so if you look at this residual income is it's a passive income. It's a recurring income. It's where you do the work one time and then you get paid over that 
over the lifetime without having to do that same work again. And so there's power in this because we just talked about we are limited, right? We're limited in our time and we're limited on how far we can stretch ourselves. And so this is really the only way that you can create true wealth freedom. Um, and it's a huge lesson for us to learn because we all do have constraints and we all do need to create some way to create income over time. Um, lesson number three is about investment. Um, this is something that was new for me that I didn't really know, um, but companies like Tesla, they actually have to go out and get backers to uh, support them financially in their endeavors. Um, so every time they are looking to expand or continue growth, they actually have to go out and get support for that. And they have to raise that money to invest in their business. And you know, if you look at a typical business, we know that it's about $65,000 to start your own business nowadays. Um, and if you look at franchises, I mean, it can be a million dollars just to start your franchise, depending on, you know, if it's, if it's a big one or, you know, if it's maybe a little lesser known, it can vary in cost. But I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of money, right? So you have to have some kind of backing. So a lot of times people will go out and will get like a business type loan to start that business. Um, and, and Roger learned this really quick when he um, was looking at different companies and he decided to become, uh, to purchase a part of this one company. Um, and he, you know, he had to find the money to do this and it was a lot of money up front. And so he learned quickly that when you're looking at being an entrepreneur and starting your own business, it takes money and it takes a lot of money up front. Um, and this is something that we don't all have, right? I mean, we don't all come from super, you know, wealthy families or we don't have, you know, huge savings accounts that we can just go out and we can start our own business at any time. Um, so lesson number four, risk. Roger shared a story about um, he was really, he got into the, on the cusp of when sales online were really starting to take off. Um, so he got into the company beautycounter.com. He uh, started that because he had some different um, relationships with other big beauty companies out there like Estee Lauder, um, different ones like that. And, you know, and so they started this beauty count or beauty.com, I'm sorry, not beauty counter, beauty.com. And he said, this was the craziest thing he's ever done because basically he had six months for this business to really pan out and, and, and to be successful or else he was personally responsible for millions of dollars that he had, he had invested himself personally into advertising and to get this up and running. And thankfully at the end, he did come out on top with beauty.com and it became um, the number one. But he said, you know, after that, he immediately sold it. And um, it was the first time in his life he'd really stepped back and, and said, wow, <laughs> that was really risky. And it wasn't um, necessarily a good feeling for him. He's super glad that he got lucky because he would have had to personally pay all of the, those millions back that he had invested. Um, and so he started thinking about risk when it comes to a business, right? We don't know how a business is going to pan out when we start it. And um, if you know anybody who's ever started a business like a brick and mortar, it can take years to just break even. Um, and so there's a lot of risk involved not knowing how, how it's going to do, if it's going to be well received, if it's going to take off. Um, and so that really got him thinking about, you know, what, what it is that he wanted to do um, and these different lessons he's learned. And um, he actually had the privilege of seeing his uncle who he he actually saw as a grandfather to him. Um, he had created an abundance of wealth and he wanted to give it all away. And so Roger started thinking about, you know, philanthropy and, you know, giving, giving wealth away and helping people. And so he got to um, watch his uncle. He had, he had built this house where he had like a seating area and he had his office and people would come in and share about what they wanted to do, um, like start a business or a venture or whatever it was. Um, and his uncle would write a check to them or invest in them or, you know, whatever the case may be. Sometimes they would pay it back, sometimes not. Um, and one of these originals were, um, the two, I think it was two men who started Reebok. And so if you know Reebok, <laughs> Reebok is still around and still doing very well. And so Roger started thinking about, you know, rather than 
just giving money away, which is also a great thing and has its you know place, obviously. Um, it is a great thing. Um, but this idea of teaching a man to fish, which Roger never said those exact words, but as he was talking about this, that's, a, that's exactly what I was thinking about. You know, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but if you teach a man to fish, then you feed him for a lifetime. And, you know, that's when he really started thinking about, you know, a way to invest in people so that they can create something that's going to sustain them for life you know teaching people how to do something rather than just giving them something and how that is just you know uh, it just has so much more power and much a farther reaching impact um, than just giving something to someone and so all these lessons together he started thinking about you know he didn't want to take those big risks anymore, but he, he really wanted to find something where he could marry his passions with a way to create income. And that's when he started looking for a company or making a list of a company, you know, that he wanted to partner with or buy or however that would look because he wanted a way, you know, to help people to, you know, have, um, better lives and, you know, he wanted a way to, um, you know, invest in future generations and, you know, just to really make a global impact. And so he really started looking, but he also started looking at the markets here um, in the U.S. and in the world. And, you know, because obviously if you're starting a business or buying a business, you want to make sure it's something that is not just popular today but has a projected growth and a large target market, right? If you have a product that nobody wants, well, your business isn't gonna go very far. So it needed to be something that had massive room for growth and that there was a great need for it. And so that's when he really started looking at the health crisis here in the US. And if you aren't familiar with this, <laughs> um, this is something really to get familiar with because it's a huge deal right now. Um, and it has been for a long time, and it, it is going to be even more so as we go forward in the future. Um, so the US is the number one fender on health, healthcare. Um, however, we are not ranked number one <laughs> in health in our, in our nation compared to other countries in the world. I wanna say we're actually ranked 37th um, in the world, and it's crazy to think about that even though we spend the most on our health care, we are not the healthiest nation. And that's because we wait to treat sick people rather than teaching people how to not get sick in the first place, right? Through prevention. Um, and if you look at the diseases that, you know, Americans are dying from, most of them are preventable by diet and lifestyle changes, 80% in fact. So that means 80%, right? can be changed by diet and health. But the very unfortunate part with this is that our doctors are not being educated to the full extent when it comes to nutrition. So I found a couple of these articles um, from, you know, just about the education of nutrition for medical students, um, one from Harvard and then the other one uh, from this, it was an actual study done on the hours that doctors are spending learning about nutrition. And it's crazy to think that even though 80% of the diseases that we're dying from are preventable by lifestyle and diet, our doctors are not being educated in nutrition. And so there's this huge need right now for a massive shift in the way that our our nation works when it comes to health. And so Roger was seeing this, you know, he's seeing this market that, you know, we need options to teach people about prevention. You know, we have a huge need right now and there really is a crisis and it's getting worse and worse. If you look at obesity here, I have this picture of, you know, obesity in children um, and the things that we're eating are not good for us. They're definitely not good for our children. And it's estimated that um, the generations now are going to live shorter lives than their grandparents. And that is not something that we want to leave as a legacy for our children and our children's children, right? So he started making this list, like I said, and he was looking for a company that was in the right market, had projected growth, um, was an answer to um, you know, a big need going on, um, and not just now, but for years and years, right? Um, and Roger spent many years actually looking for a company that would fit 
um, his list. And towards the end of him searching, um, the board actually came to him and they were getting a little angry saying, guess what? We're not finding a company like this. You need to lessen um, the, the different criteria you have in a company. And Roger said, no, you know, I want something that combines passion and low risk and, you know, low investment and, and a company that truly cares for people and, you know, has something that meets these needs that people have. Um, and that's when Roger found Shackley. And Shackley was not for sale. <laughs> so Roger called up Shackley and said, hey, I want to buy you. I have this list and you guys need it and I want to buy you. And they said, well, that's nice, but it's not for sale. And he said he was so surprised because he was so set on it and so excited that he finally found a company that really, you know, panned out and, and met all these different criteria that he had that he hung up the phone <laughs> because he didn't know what else to do. Um, and so he waited a few days and then he called back again and said, hey, listen, I'm going to be in Japan because uh, Shackley was owned by a Japanese pharmaceutical company at the time, um, which, which did not mean that Shackley had switched to pharmaceuticals. They were just run by a pharmaceutical grade company. Um, but he called them and he said, hey, I'm going to be in Japan in a couple of weeks, I'd love to come and take a look at your company because I want to buy it. <laughs> and they said, again, that's nice. Our company's not for sale. You can come to Japan, but no. <laughs> and so Roger continued pursuing them and, and waiting. And, um, and then uh, I think it was a year or two later. Um, I can't remember exactly how much time, but she actually actually came up for sale because uh, this com this Japanese pharmaceutical company was merging with another Japanese company. And I guess according to their culture, they get rid of all of the um, non-essential aspects of the business when they're doing these mergers. And Shackley was one of those. And so because Roger had already been pursuing this company, he was able to jump on this quickly um, and he bought Shackley. Um, and so that's where we come in and we're going to talk a little bit about you know, why Shackley? Why is Shackley such an amazing opportunity for entrepreneurs? And when we're looking at these different things of low startup, zero risk, residual income, position for growth, right? Something that's duplicatable for generations. Um, something that has an answer to this global health crisis we have going on right now. Something that has products as you know, products for a long time, products that are proven by time, products that are proven by clinical studies. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But, you know, products that other people wish that they had, because a lot of times companies get started um, with a couple products or they'll get started because they love the business model. And so they'll create a few products, but they don't necessarily have, well, not necessarily, but most just don't have what we have. And industry leaders, uh, within the, the same model that we follow, they want to be us because they want the research and, and the, the quality that we have and longevity. Um, and Shackley's position <laughs> in the center, okay, of all of these different things, beauty, anti-aging, green, natural, health and wellness, home-based business, nutrition, um, and it's projected to grow by nearly a trillion dollars over the next 10 years. So we are in a place where most people <laughs> wish that they could be, um, and we have so much to offer. Um, so like I said, uh, Kim, would you like to take this part over and talk a little bit about the uh, philosophy, philosophy and products yeah. and, and research and all of that? Um, sure. Yeah. I, I can, can you, can you even see me? Sorry. I had to get on, on my phone and I don't know if I have, if you can even see me. I can, I can see your picture. I can't see you personally, but I can okay. see your picture. <laughs> okay. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm currently sitting on the floor in my bathroom trying to get a signal to uh, be on here tonight. So <laughs> well, we can hear you. You're good. If, if not, I'll take over. It's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. And Chelsea, thank you so much that you did a great job at um, just kind of reviewing the lessons that were learned um, you know, that we learned from Roger on, on Saturday night and, uh, kind of just even thinking about today mm -hmm. or tonight's presentation, I was, I was just kind of reflecting, um, you know, even my journey, I guess, as being, um, an employee and then, um, owning a brick and mortar, uh, business and, um, also being involved in kind of like uh, entrepreneurial as in service and, you know, I was really reflecting all and all that. And I was just like, 
wow. I mean, I, I just, I think it was more of a solidarity thing that I'm really in the right business at the right time. And some of those things that, you know, um, you know, that experiencing that trading time for money and, you know, continuing to always have to invest in, we had a flower shop and a greenhouse and always having to purchase those, you know, flowers. And if we didn't have enough orders, they would literally go on our garden. I mean, just, you know, there was just so many things I was reflecting back and seeing the, the risk that we took and the loss and um, how this type of business is, um, you know, I, I don't have those losses financially. And um, I think one other thing that Roger said, and you mentioned it too, was just being able to bring that, how you can bring that entrepreneurship, yet your love for wanting to help and care about people and then bringing in the whole healthcare aspect that we really are making a difference in people's lives in so many ways. Um, and that's what's so exciting about um, a business like this. So I just wanted to share that. I just was reflecting on that a little bit um, today. So yeah, no, I, I think you're so right. And, and, you know, and that's why I remember Roger said I was laughing about it, but he said, you know, if you don't like to be told what to do, <laughs> right? And that's totally me. I, I remember my husband and I sat down to have a talk about me going back to work after our kids were all in school, which actually hasn't happened yet because we just continue to keep having kids. But, <laughs> um, but I remember at that point, I, I thought to myself, well, I have five years, you know, to figure something out where I don't have to go and trade my time for money. Um, and I had no idea what that was going to be, but all I knew was I did not want to go to another interview and I did not want to work for somebody else. <laughs> wow. And so I started an Etsy business, but unfortunately that just didn't work for me and having little kids because it, it was very time consuming. It was fun, but you know, it, it didn't provide that long-term income, you know, that it didn't provide residual income or anything like that, you know, so it was, I was working order by order. Um, and so it was just missing a lot of the key pieces that, you know, Roger talked about that we want in a business, um, you know, and, and, and so I told myself, oh, I have five years. And then that's when uh, Alyssa introduced Shackley to me. And I said, no, <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, no, I don't want any part of network marketing. You know, I, I, I don't want to do that. I'm not a party business person. Um, and that's when, you know, Alyssa was very patient with me and educated me on how this even though it's the same model, it's a very different culture. And the way that we grow our business is much different than a lot of other people and other companies, just because this is an education business. And there are so many different ways that we can do this business. I mean, from webinars like this to, um, you know, different, um, we do in homes, but I don't do a lot of in homes because I move so much as military. Um, I, I, I do love them and I try to do them as much as possible, but it just doesn't happen as much since we do move and have to reestablish each time. But you know, it, it really is such a different feel than anything else that I've ever done. And it, it, it's just amazing. I mean, looking at this, right. A hundred yeah. years of innovation, yeah. you know, when, when people look at the multivitamin, well, we have Dr. Shackley to thank for that because he created the first vitalized minerals in 1915. You know, when we look at green cleaners, he created the first green, like non-toxic biodegradable cleaner um, in 1960. When we look at protein, I mean, how many people have protein shakes, right? Of some shape or form. Well, in 1961, he created the first instant protein, plant-based protein. <laughs> so we really have him to thank for all of this. And he was such a pioneer and to know that we have this longevity behind us, that we have a hundred years of product innovation, you know, behind us. And we touch all of these key markets of health and, you know, clean beauty and targeted solutions and, and, and green cleaning. And I mean, what else? Weight loss. I mean, there's so many different things that, that we have options for that. I, I <laughs> honestly, I can almost not shop. <laughs> from any other store <laughs> and just use Shackley. You know, it's amazing. Um, so moving on here, hang on. My, there we go. <laughs> but you know, not only that, we have the studies to prove it, right? Um, and this is something that other people don't have. Um, other companies do not have this. And I think it wasn't until I got to hear Roger and, and Heather talk um, just about Shackley even more when I was in Chicago, I didn't understand this. And I think going and listening to them, now I have a much bigger grasp on what these studies mean 
So we have this landmark study. Um, so this was uh, UC Berkeley of California. Um, they were doing this massive study on supplement use. And um, we decided to be part of this. And Roger agreed to be part of this study knowing that the results were going to be published without us ever knowing and regardless of what they were. So if they made Shackley look bad, well, that's, that's too bad basically. Right. But Roger and our company believe so much in our products that we said, yes, we want to be a part of this, you know? And so basically, so here's what they were doing. They were comparing, um, supplement use of people who just use like a multivitamin, people who use multiple, multiple supplements, Shackley people who use multiple supplements. Um, and these were compared to people in the San Francisco Bay area. So healthy, non-smoking people. <laughs> so very, very healthy people, probably the healthiest people in the US, right? Um, <clears throat> and so we did this comparison and, and it compared um, all of these different groups. And if you look here at this dotted black line, um, that is showing the percentage of like, there's going to be bad health outcomes, right? So as we age, we have a higher percentage of bad health outcomes. Um, and you can see in the different groups there, no supplements obviously have the highest percentage of bad health outcomes. Um, and that's just because we know we can't get everything we need from our diet. And sadly, sad is our standard American diet. And um, it just doesn't include a lot of the foods that we need to be healthy to get the nutrients in the first place. Um, you know, thankfully, people who use a multivitamin, just any multivitamin is a little bit healthier um, than no supplements. Multiple supplement users are um, a little healthier again, but you still see all of these are ending up above that dotted line. And that's not where we want to be in our health. But if you look at that green line, that's Shackley users. These are people who have been using Shackley products for what was it at least 20 years was that what the study was i, I think um i want to say yes right mm -hmm. right at least 20 years so you know and, and other companies don't have this because their companies haven't been around for at least 20 years first of all um or they just don't have the kind of consistency that we have in shackley that you know the average shackley user <clears throat> i want to say uses the products for like 17 years on average or something um, maybe it's 11 i can't remember right now but you know, this is a study that we have <laughs> proving that the products that we have make people healthier. <laughs> we are staying behind or underneath that line there, you know. Uh, we had the pleasure in Chicago of meeting um, a man and a, a husband and a wife. He was 92. He literally hopped on the stage, didn't even take the stairs. Um, he's been using Chate products for since he was 18, some, something like that. Um, and he just became the world or won the world championship in rowing, <laughs> you know, so it, it's not just the studies that are proving it. It's the people within Shackley that are proving that our products do what they say that they do and they do make us healthier. Um, and like I said, we cover such a vast array of different products. I mean, we have something for everybody. And I think that's where, you know, looking at a lot of businesses, it's very niche markets, right? It's very like specific, um, you know, and even if you look at other businesses like ours, it's very specific to what it is, the products that they're offering or um, the people that they're offering it to, you know, but we have something for any age, <laughs> um, kids, older, middle-aged, teens, it doesn't matter. We offer something for everybody, man, woman, it doesn't matter. Um, and so I think that that's where you know, we have such a, a, a foot up <laughs> in this game, right? Because we do have um, just such a vast array of products and, and we have these studies and people that prove it. Um, but not only that, right? This is where the Shackley difference comes in. So our products are safe. And when we mean safe, we don't just mean we put safe on the bottle so that, so that you feel good about it, right? <laughs> we mean that we are obsessed with quality and making sure that our standards are there. Um, and I, I love to share this story because, um, so there, there, we were getting a raw ingredients from, um, this organic farmer, um, and we always test. So we test all of the ingredients before they even, before we even take them from, you know, like before they go into the products, right? Because we want to make sure that the finished product is just as good as what's going in. And we want to make sure there's no contaminants or pesticides or any impurities. So there was, <coughs> excuse me, this organic farm um, where we took the, the raw ingredients and we tested it. Um, well, it came back that they had pesticide residues on 
on this raw ingredient. And so we went back to this farmer and we said, listen, you've got pesticide residue on here. We can't take this. You need to fix it or we're going to have to go somewhere else and look for these, these ingredients. Um, and they said, well, that's crazy. We don't use any pesticides on our products. So how can this be? And it turned out that a, a field nearby that did use pesticides was having rainwater runoff that was contaminating this organic field. And that's just one example of Shackley's obsession with quality and an obsession with safety. Because we want you as a consumer and as me, <laughs> you know, as someone sharing these products, we want to have 100% certainty that our products are above and beyond um, what is required by the U.S. Pharmacopeia, right? Because even, even there, they require, um, you know, a certain number of tests, but things can slip through, right? I mean, how often do you hear a company say like, oh yeah, there's, there's lead or whatever, heavy metal that's just naturally occurring in there. No, that's not okay. <laughs> you know, Shackley will say, no, fix it or we go somewhere else. We conduct over 100,000 quality tests per year. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, you guys. Um, and we have never had a questionable result in any quality test over 100 years. And that is something that we can stand behind, all of us, from product users to those who share the products and, and beyond. Um, because we truly do follow beyond organic standards. Even organic, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but organic actually can have some residues of pesticides on them. And they, that still passes organic, but Shackley says no. So that's why when people ask us, are you organic? We are organic when organic meets Shackley's standards, but Shackley does not lower our standards to meet organic. So I, I, I just, that to me, um, I don't know how many times I've stood in the grocery aisle looking at products thinking, you know, is this good? Is this healthy? I'm not sure. Um, and I don't have to worry about that with Shackley. I don't have to worry about what I'm giving to my kids and to myself because I know with 100% certainty that it is above and beyond anything that I could ever imagine. And I'm so thankful for that as a mom. <laughs> right, Kim? I don't know. I'm sure you feel the same. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, um, that, that is extremely important to me. But you know what? Um, eight years ago, I, I didn't, didn't know that it should be, but I was diagnosed with um, stage four lymphoma. And I'll tell you, my eyes were completely open. My husband and I had to really start looking at, you know, our diet and, you know, what things we put on our skin. And that was when I was introduced to Shackley. And so it, it's been um, so important to me that I know that I can get almost everything that I need in my home from one company and they go beyond those standards. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's extremely important. Yeah. I did not know that Kim. That's, that's amazing. You did not? Yeah. No, I yeah. didn't. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 It really makes you think about what you're using and put it in your skin, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, that's when my dietitian actually introduced me to Shackley and she said, I'm telling you about this company because of all these, you know, standards, but you can get everything from the same store. I mean, it's, it's basically, right. um, you need to look at what cleaners are being sprayed in your air and what products you're putting on your skin and what nutritionals you're taking and um, it was a, it was my first, even as a nurse, it was my very first, um, introduction to a truly holistic kind of a lifestyle had no, had no, I mean, again, I went to nursing school, but there was no nutrition. I mean, what, maybe, you know, a five minute nutritional class. Um, there wasn't anything that, that talked about how chemicals affect our health. And, um, so my education on holistic came through Shackley and, and the Shackley family. Wow. Yeah. I, I, and I think that, that, you know, that's what I was talking about with the doctors too. I mean, we just, we have such a health crisis because nobody is talking about nutrition and it's really the key to, mm -hmm. you know, everything. But I, I like what you said about cleaners because that's why I got started with Shackley because I was looking for, you know, something that was going to be safe around my kids because, you know, I was giving my kids a bath in the same tub that I had just cleaned with a Clorox type product. And I just kept thinking, you know, if I'm supposed to use this in a well-ventilated area, how good is this? And how much residue is like on my children's bodies right now, right? No matter how well I rinsed it. Um, and so it was a long, <laughs> it was a long search for something that was safe, cost-effective and actually worked. But I've never looked back now that I've found Shackley products and, and it, you know, <laughs> saved us so much money now. But, oh, yeah. Um, and trips to the ER because my kids, you know, they use the cleaners and it's great because it's safe for them, you know, so I love that. But 
Um, yeah, you know, and just like we were talking about, it, it's proven by people too. It's not just us, you know, it's not just moms. It's not just, um, you know, people who are building a business, you know, it's proven by NASA <laughs> astronauts. Um, it's proven by Olympians and, um, something that I didn't know until a few years ago. Um, I learned that most Olympians do not supplement because of the contamination um, that happens in the supplement interest industry. And I mean, their whole career can be completely ruined in just one test um, because they're, they have to submit to 365 24 seven testing for, for drugs and contaminants. Um, and if they fail one of those, it can totally take them out and, and, and remove them from, from their whole life spent, you know, trying to get to the Olympic games. And, um, so it's a huge deal. Um, and I learned from Eli Brimmer, he actually, uh, he came to a point where he couldn't get what he needed, um, when it came to vitamins and minerals from his diet, but he was severely, severely deficient in, um, I want to say it was iron. I wanna, yeah, it was iron. And if you know um, anything about iron rich foods, they're not always that tasty, like a lot of liver. Um, and so he just, he, he couldn't perform even practice to the capacity that he needed to um, preparing for the Olympic games. And so that's when he, he knew he had to supplement. Um, and thankfully he found Shackley and it was the first time that he was able to be completely confident in what he was giving his body. And now he's a huge advocate in the Olympic community, um, for other Olympic athletes in, in helping them to fuel their bodies with something that's safe, a hundred percent safe, knowing that it's completely free of any kind of contaminants or um, anything that could take them out of the running for what they're doing. And they've been working their whole lives for. Um, and not only that, we have a hundred, over a hundred patents and patents pending on our products, um, which if you think about that, um, that has to do with the science because you can't patent <laughs> something that you pull out of the ground, right? I mean, that's, you can't patent um, a raw ingredient. So it has to do with the technology um, and, and how we create our products. And that's why I love we do the best of nature with the best of science and we get the best of both worlds. And we have over a hundred clinical studies. Um, that's a lot. Most companies have maybe one or two. We have over a hundred. Um, so Kim, is there anything else that you would like to share about just your experience with um, you know, being a nurse, being a nurse and businesses you've done, um, before I head into this about military. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I kind of talked about the business aspect before and, and it's real interesting because I, I kind of, um, you know, I always wanted that freedom and flexibility. Um, I had tried some other things before, even though we even had had our own small business, but most recently I stopped, I, I quit my job as a nurse because I really, wanted to be able to tell people the whole story um, and have that freedom to do that. And so part of that was continuing on with my Shackley business. But then I thought, well, I've also been going to school for um, additional certifications in health coaching. But, but what I realized is that I'm still, even in that service oriented of health coaching, I'm still trading my time for money. And I kept coming back to investing all of what I do into building my Shackley business because I can really truly help more people because of that ripple effect that goes out. And I guess that's just, you know, when Roger talked about finding something that matches up with your passion, um, for me, I became a nurse because I wanted to help people. Um, and so I feel like there's, it's such a, a bigger way for me to help them even, you know, with their health. And that is great. But what we forget about is that, not everybody stays awake at night wondering what multivitamin they should take, but a lot of people are laying in bed awake and stressing about how they're going to pay their bills. Um, and so, so this is such a complete package um, that I continue to remind myself what a gift I have that I have to share with other people. And um, I think if that's anything I wanted to, you know, to be able to share that if someone is considering, you know, if you've been someone looking um, that, that this is a great, it's, it's like a great marriage <laughs> of, of helping people with their health, helping people with their finances. Um, and then, you know, just the, the heritage that Shackley has and that proof in the products 
um, really make it something that I can be confident about and that I can be confident sharing with other people. So. So true. I love what you said there because you're right. And I've heard it said that even just a hundred to $300 a month extra can mean the difference of somebody going completely under in their family to actually being able to save and to thrive and, and to pay things off. And, um, like you said, I love that we have both aspects of this. We have the amazing products because you can't have a company without amazing products, but because of what we have here, we get to share that with people. And, and like you said, we get to multiply our effect. You know, we get to multiply our impact because we get to educate other people and teach them how to educate other people and how to love and serve other people it, through mm -hmm. this business. And we truly get to multiply our impact because I can only reach so many people, right? I have my network of people that I know, and I'm always meeting new people, but I'm still, you know, limited to as many people as I can meet, <laughs> right? right? But when I share this business with somebody else, and they start sharing the products and the business with other people, they have a completely different network than I have. And, and their reach is, you know, much different than mine. And, and I just love that it truly is a ripple effect. Like you said, you know, it truly is a way that we get to do the best of both things. And, you know, that brings me to why does this work for the military life? Um, you know, because like I said, um, you know, I was staying home at the time when I decided that, I was going to do something and I wasn't sure what, and then it was, it took me a little while to, to, to realize, you know, through Alyssa educating me on what this business looks like, that this could really be a way for me to create an income from home. And that's why I got started because I wanted to create an income from home, but it's been so much more than that. Um, to actually find a company that has the same culture and philosophy and just integrity, um, that I hold myself and our family to uh, was just a miracle in and of itself, <laughs> you know, coming from the corporate world before I had kids. Um, you know, a lot of it is so much about politics. A lot of it is about, you know, stepping on other people to get to the top. Um, and when you look at a typical business, there's only one owner, right? And everyone else is under them and your likelihood of getting up to that place where you're the owner is, very slim, <laughs> you know, um, and that's why I love this model because it totally levels the playing field. Um, but specifically for the military, um, for us, we move a lot, um, but not just moving, we're on the road a lot. Uh, so I need something that's completely a hundred percent mobile that I can do for my phone. Um, and I can do this business from my phone. You know, a lot of what I do is through social media, through connections, through conversations with people. Um, and I love that I can take this business anywhere that I go. Uh, and you know, I can continue to share it no matter where we are, whether we're in the middle of a big move or whether we're just heading home to, to visit family for the holidays, you know, and, and we truly have a global reach with this business. We're not just here in the U S Shackley is a global company. Um, and so we don't have to just be limited to our small communities or even just our country. We, we have a global reach there. Um, and I don't have to ship to customers. And I think that, you know, it seems like such a simple thing, but not having inventory and not having to ship to customers is something that you don't even think about until you're military and you move a lot. <laughs> There's no way I have customers in, I don't even know how many different States now. There's no way that I could to ship to customers, you know, um, it's completely social. It's hundred percent flexible. I get to decide when I work and I recently started homeschooling our two oldest, um, you know, and, and it's still continued to be flexible and to work around that time, you know, and it works for people who are already professionals in working, um, somewhere else. Uh, you know, it works for moms. It works for anybody. It doesn't matter. You know, we can make the time for what's important to us. Um, and I just love the flexibility in that, you know, like I said, it's a culture of integrity, right? It's a culture of just complete transparency, um, and just support for one another in this community. I mean, Kim and I, we are not in the exact same line, right? Are we cousins? Cousins. I think we're cousins. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we're in different organizations in Shackley, but that's the great thing about Shackley as a community because we all work together because we all have a common goal in mind of helping other people. <laughs> and that starts with working together. Um, you know, I, I get to travel um, with this business in ways that I never was able to before. 
Um, and a lot of times it's with Shackley Payne, <laughs> which is really great, right? Um, there are tax benefits. Uh, and this is really important for me in military with traveling because we travel home a lot. And so when I'm smart about those trips and, and I plan different things for my business along the way and throughout beginning and end, you know, I can, those are different things that I can deduct in taxes because I'm traveling for my business, right? Um, and again, you know, we, we just, we have so much here. We have support, we have tools, we have mentorship, you know, from home office to the field to, you know, the organization and our uplines and sponsors. Um, we're never alone. <laughs> we're in business for ourselves, but never by ourselves, which I think is such an amazing thing because I've heard from a lot of people who have joined my team that, you know, they've tried other businesses out there like this and they don't get any support. Um, basically they get started and then the person says, okay, have fun, you know, and, and there's just not so much support there. Um, and that's, this is totally a different type of business than that, where we completely have that support. And this is not just a selling business. Like a lot of people tell me, oh, I, I can't sell things. Um, but this is actually a leadership business. This is an education business where we educate people. We, we teach people how to do something. We teach a person to fish, right? <laughs> we teach them those skills that they need. Um, and, and essentially what we're doing is we're helping to create leaders and we ourselves are learning how to be better leaders every single day. Um, and it's a big personal development business. Um, and that's a big one for me. Um, especially in military, I, you know, I've always loved being in leadership and, and encouraging people and, and helping people to be the best version of themselves, um, which I guess I could do through army, but I also would be told what to do, right? My husband always wanted me to join the army, but I never wanted to because I don't like being told what to do. So I love that this is a leadership business and I get to use my leadership skills and, and make them better um, all along the way with helping being told what to do. Um, and, and one thing that you know, there's, there's a lot of bias out there, right? Um, for a lot of different things. Um, even in, you know, in the corporate world, there's politics, um, people, so there's just so many different things going on, but this business and this company and this culture is the one that it doesn't matter <laughs> who you are, where you come from, where you live, what age you are. It doesn't, none of that matters because we all start in the same place. Um, and it really is such an amazing opportunity. And those are just a few why I love this for military. Um, but the other thing is Shackley partners with those who are in the military, whether it's spouses or you've served or you're currently serving and Shackley actually offers a way for you to start your business, um, with $49.95 off. Um, so technically you could start your business for free, but you don't get any products with that. So, um, I'm going to be talking in the actual event page a little bit more about that and some of my favorite ways to join um, and the best ways to get you the best products um, with the best value. Um, but how cool is that? That Shackley realizes the importance of the military community and, and wants to partner with us in, in, in creating a way <laughs> where we can live outside of limitations where we within the military community live within a lot of limitations. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at, Soldiers, soldiers get paid so much based on rank and based on time and service, um, which is great. Like I said, we wouldn't trade our, our military life. My husband loves what he does. Um, but there are a lot of limitations with that. You know, there's time limitations um, and so many different things that, you know, you just, you don't have a say. You just, you get what you get and that's it, <laughs> no matter how good you are. Um, and so I love that this is so far outside of the box for that. Um, and people always ask us, you know, well, how much can I actually make? But the great thing with this is there's really no limit to what you can or can't make in this. Um, it really is dependent upon you and how much you are willing to learn, how teachable you are, how persistent you are, and how consistent you are in learning the best way to do things and continuing just to love and serve people. Um, and the great thing is we teach you how to be successful in this business, but it really comes down to you because we all have the same products. We all have the same opportunity. Um, and it comes down to what you want and what you want your business to look like, whether it's a couple hundred dollars a month, um, maybe it's covering your own products for you and your family, or maybe it's totally replacing your spouse's income, um, which is what my current goal is right now. 
um, because my husband works very hard for our family and always has and has sacrificed so much. Um, and I want to be able to turn around and replace his income so that he has freedom and flexibility in what he wants to do um, later on in life. So, you know, and of course, these are all averages, but, um, you know, again, it, it, can, it is what you want it to be. And you can do it in the time that you set and the time that you uh, commit to working your business. And that's why I love this because it truly is an opportunity for anyone. It doesn't take a big investment. It doesn't take high risk. You know, it doesn't take all these lessons that we learned from Roger. This is the perfect storm of those and really allows us all to be entrepreneurs, whether we're working on our lunch break um, at work to build our business or we're working from the park. Or, you know, in the van while we're waiting to pick up our kids or we're working, you know, in the here's and there's maybe after the kids go to bed at night or, you know, it doesn't matter. We can work from anywhere at any time in, in the time that we set aside for this. And, and it can be a full time or it can be a part time. And I love that we can create full time benefits working part time hours. And that's something that you can't do when you trade time for money. <laughs> right. Um, and I just want to encourage you that. You know, if this is something you're really thinking about, I want to encourage you and let you know that you can totally do this. Um, <laughs> I was a stay-at-home mom when I got started, and I have grown a lot personally um, just through personal development. But anybody can do this, and you will have all the tools and all the mentorship that you need to be successful. Um, but I would encourage you, don't wait to get started until you need this. Because a lot of people I talk to say, you know, I just, it's not the right time, or I don't have time right now, or, you know, I just, I don't really need it right now. You know, we don't need the extra income or, you know, whatever it may be. But the crazy thing is that when people come back to me because they do need it, it's too, it's not too late because you can always get started, but it's just not what you need it to be at that point if you wait to get started. So I, I have signed on a lot of people lately where, you know, they, they have these goals of long-term down the road. And so, you know, they're building slower and that's totally fine because they know that at some point they're going to need what this business offers. They just might not need it right now, but they know it's going to take time <laughs> to build up their business. And this is one thing that Roger talked about too. Um, I think it was Roger. It might've been Heather. Um, but they talked about, you know, this is not a flash in the pan overnight success business. This is not about hype. This is not about fads. Um, this is about building something solid that is going to last for generations because it is a generational business and you can pass it down. Um, this is something that stands the test of time. Clearly, we've seen that. This business has been around since 1956 and the products have been created since 1915. Um, this is something if you are looking to build a solid foundation um, to create wealth for whatever that is. Maybe that's so you can be a six-figure giver, not just a six-figure earner. You know, maybe that's just to make a huge impact in this world for good, to tackle this health crisis we're going for, whatever the, the case may be for you. You know, don't wait to get started until you need it. Get started now so that when you do need it, you already have a solid foundation to stand upon. Kim, is there anything, Kim, is there anything else to say, yeah. say before we wrap up here? Yes, actually, I really appreciate this slide so much because um, I had reviewed these, but I didn't think about it until you were sharing. Um, I am glad that I started when I did simply because um, I had built up an income. I was working full time, but I was, uh, we ended up taking in my father-in-law to live with us and his health continued to deteriorate. And I was able to actually go down to just two days a week because I had this supplemental income. I didn't know that I needed it at the time, but what a blessing it was to be able to be free to take him to his doctor's appointments, to care for him in our home. Um, until he passed away. I mean, it was, um, that was just a, something that was so special and important for me to be able to do for him. Um, and, you know, and now my mom is becoming, you know, up there in age in a sense. And that's something that I'm glad that I have this business um, and that I didn't wait, um, that, I, that I took that opportunity when I had, had it and just was able to kind of grasp onto that vision. And like I said, I didn't know that I needed it for that then, but now what I'm starting to think of, okay, I've got to, I'm going to be a grandma someday here soon. And I want to be available for my grandkids. And, um, 
and then also just that retirement income that I'm now building what is going to be an asset, a retirement income for myself. And I'm glad that I, I'm not, you know, I'm not waiting until I'm 65 to start a business. Mm -hmm. Again, like you said, we can do it anytime, but I'm just, you know, really thankful that, um, you know, in that, in God's provision, in a sense for us that we had this, um, within our grasp, be able to go ahead and, and, you know, reach out and, and start that. So I really appreciate that slide. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I was thinking about this as I was creating these slides and I was just thinking, you know, you don't wait to plant a tree until you need shade. Mm -hmm. You plant a tree <laughs> because you know that you want, you know, the shade that it's going to provide and, and all the other benefits of having a tree 20 years down the road, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, and, and so I think that it's just so great that we can start anytime. Um, but that this is such a long-term business and that we can build it in the here's and there's, you know, we can create that solid foundation for when we do need it. Um, and I think the crazy thing is we just never know, you know, we never know if, you know, we may lose a spouse or, you know, I mean, if I lost my husband, I don't have a job and I've been out of the workforce now since, uh, 2011, I think maybe 2012 you know, that's been a few years. Um, and I haven't used my degree, you know, so these are things like in the military that I think about because it, it is something that we have to think about. We do have to think about death before, you know, our spouses deploy. We have to do all this paperwork. We have to get our power of attorney in order. We have to get our will in order. We have to do all these different things. Um, and, and so this is something that I've always thought about, you know, and, and, you know, it's not something to be that we shouldn't talk about. It's something we should talk about because we never know when, you know, cause like right now my mother-in-law, she unfortunately broke her arm or her wrist, I believe it was her wrist. Um, and she's off work now for, I want to say it was at least four to six months and she's getting disability, but it's like, a, it's, she only gets, I want to say it's a third or two thirds of her pay. Um, and, and that can crush a lot of families, you know, to, to have a huge pay cut like that. Um, and so I just, I just encourage people that, you know, we never know what is going to happen in our lives. And it's not that we're expecting bad things to happen, not that at all, but we just never know what's going to happen. And to have something in place like this, that we're already building that, that can be, you know, our 100% foundation to stand upon in the event that something unfortunate happens. Um, it's just something that's totally priceless and, and worth looking into deeper and asking the hard questions and, you know, taking a look and seeing if this is a good fit for you. Um, so I think with that, we're going to wrap this up. Um, it's gone a little bit longer than intended, but um, please let us know um, if the person who shared this with you, if you have any questions, um, let us know those questions, talk to the person who invited you. Um, and I encourage you again to take a look and see really what's here, see what you could do with this. Um, and we just thank you all for taking the time out tonight to be here with us. Thank you guys so much. All right, take care.